Hey y'all, welcome to the kitchen. Today, we're gonna be making the second ferment of kombucha. So I've got my supplies out, got some bottles. I don't use the flip top bottles just because of the high carbonation. I don't care for that. So I got these bottles on Amazon and I'll have the link to that in my description. I've got some naked juice. I've got the red machine and the mighty mango. The mango is my favorite. I've got my tea brewed. I've got two batches of scobies I'm going to be working up today, kombucha. So I've got an extra cup of sugar over here for the next batch of tea, which is already brewed. This is my scoby. Looks like there's two in there, so I might separate and do a separate one or make a scoby hotel and start stacking them up. We'll get started. You need to wash your hands really good with a non-antibacterial soap before handling the scoby. And wash it here. I use the Myers products that are um, just for hand washing and uh, I get those at the Grove Collaborative. You can click the link in the description below and get some freebies if you're interested in cleaning with more natural products. Okay, so my next step is going to be getting my jars open. These have been cleaned in the dishwasher. And I'm going to add my fruit juice. Um, I've got some of the naked red machine opened already that needs to, be, needs to be used. So, and I just put a quarter of a cup in each jar or a little less. You do it to your choosing. I'm not thinking, no, this funnel does not fit that well. I thought it might. I've got some other funnels. These are real handy little funnels and I got them on Amazon. Uh, I have an affiliate link in the description below for that as well. Just something that keeps from making quite so much mess because I'm pretty messy. Another test of my skill is going to be getting the kombucha into this horrible picture so that I can put it in here. And I'm going to leave some in the jar. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I think I've spilled maybe a drop, but here comes the real test. I'm trying to get this through this funnel and be very careful. I may be it out if I make a huge mess. Okay, and I may just kind of, you know what? I might just do this too. I'm gonna dirty up every dish in the house. Any of y'all ever do that? I'm gonna take this smaller one and dip it in here and go this route. Maybe, just maybe keep from making a huge mess. So I'm just taking my actual kombucha and pouring it into my jar with my fruit juice and filling it all the way up and putting a 
plastic lid on. This is a glass bottle, and that's what you need for kombucha. Some people use the flip top kind with um, that seals it and makes it heavily carbonated. I don't care for that. Um, I'd rather just have it slightly carbonated. So I um, use these glass bottles such as this. Lay this over here out of the way. And I'm just going to do them like that with the lid on tight. Mix it up a little bit. I'll set it on the shelf for four or five days and then pull it. It'll carbonate a little bit. I don't burp mine in between because I'm not using the flip top bottles. So four or five days on the shelf and then I stick it in the refrigerator and it's good to go. Yeah, you can strain this ahead of time. Um, sometimes I do that if there's a lot of scoby residue, but I don't mind it so much. As long as it doesn't hit my teeth, I'm good. But I did save some extra on the side, so I'm going to add a little more. You see, most of that uh, residue is still in the bottom here, and I'm going to save that and keep using it. When I made my first brew of tea, the very first time, I strained everything and then I decided that I was losing some benefit by doing that. But I want to fill my jars all the way up. So that worked out perfectly. It left me some to continue with the next brew. It gave me uh, six bottles of Red Machine Kombucha. These will sit on the shelf four or five days. Then they'll head to the refrigerator. Now then, we're going to be reintroducing our SCOBY back into our gallon jug. If you had emptied that jug, you wouldn't wash it. You would just continue on I like to save a little bit. It seems to keep the process going faster. So I do that. I'm gonna take a damp paper towel that's just water or vinegar only. Nothing uh, that's antibacterial, really, that would harm the scoby. So I'm basically just using water on the towel. Just kind of cleaning up my jar because like I said, I'm messy. going to re-rinse my hands without an antibacterial soap before I touch the SCOBY. Now we're going to take our SCOBY and check it out, make sure there's nothing really bad or dingy looking. This could actually be divided, but I'm not going to divide this one. I'm going to put it back in here and just let it build. Now, some people pour their tea in first. For me, it doesn't matter as long as I'm, you know, cautious with it. It's going to float. This has uh, four tea bags to four cups of water and then a cup of sugar and then just filtered water to, to finish it off about two-thirds a gallon. you got to leave some room for your air to circulate and to put the remainder of this bit of scoby juice. So, it's getting kind of full. I'm going to stop there. And then I'll just go on to the next batch. I've got a whole other jug ready to go.